Well, hello again. What I want to do today is introduce you to superposition. Now, the, you're going to find this is an extremely valuable technique. The only word of caution here is that it applies to linear circuits. Uh, we're going to talk more about this a little bit later on, but basically there has to be a linear relationship between voltage and current. Now, I'm going to consider this by way of an example. So we're going to take something really simple here. Okay, so we're going to look at a circuit that's got two sources. Okay, so we've got a source here, we've got a resistor which is going to be a 1K, another resistor over here which I'm saying is a 4K resistor, another voltage source sitting over here, and this is our basic circuit that we want to analyze. All right, so there's going to be 10 volts here, there's going to be 5 volts sitting over here. Now, what we want is basically the voltage between this point here and our reference over here. So we're really wanting this voltage here, and we're going to call that voltage Vx. All right, so we're going to use just a standard circuit analysis technique to find that Vx. All right, so what we're going to do is look at taking a loop approach. All right, so we've got that particular circuit and we're simply going to sum voltages around the loop. So let me, let me go ahead and define a current, doesn't matter which way. We'll define the current as going in this direction, we're going to call it I. This is going to establish a voltage plus minus, current going from a high to a low. Continuing on around, we've got plus minus, okay? And all we're going to do is we're really going to take this loop right here and we're going to sum those voltages. So we're going to start right here. So what have we got? We've got and I'm just going to use that convention. If I go up in voltage, I'm going to call it positive. If I drop in voltage, I'm going to call it negative. I don't mind which way you do that. You could do it in the opposite way if you so choose. All right, so here we go. A minus to a plus, I'm going to say that's 10. Dropping here, that's a minus what? I times 1K. Dropping over here, that's a minus I times 4K. And then, of course, a drop here, that is minus 5, isn't it? And all of that is equal to 0. Okay, so let's just rearrange this. We've got 10 minus 5 is equal to what? I times 5K. And of course that is equal to 5, isn't it? And so therefore I can say that my current I is simply equal to 5 divided by 5K, which of course is equal to 1 milliamp. So that's my current flowing in this circuit. Now what we want is of course Vx. So how do I find Vx? <clears throat> well, I could apply Kirchhoff's voltage law yet again, couldn't I, in order to find Vx. All right, so the loop I could take now is this, which now includes that Vx. Once again, let's sum around the loop. So here we go, we've got what, 10? We're dropping, we've got a minus i times 1k, and then we're coming across here, so that's a what? Minus Vx, and all of that is equal to zero. Taking Vx to the other side, Vx is then equal to 10 minus I 1K. So that's 10 minus 1 milliamp times 1K equals Vx. Uh, so that's really 10 minus, this is just one, equals Vx, and so Vx is simply 9 volts, okay? So that was a simple problem, a simple loop, in order to look at Vx. So let, let's now have a look at the same problem, this time using superposition. With superposition, we basically have one source acting at a time, and we zero the other sources. So if we have voltage sources, Okay, to zero a voltage source, what do we do? We make them shorts. If we have current sources, to zero a current source, we make them opens. Okay, so that's what we have to do. So let's look in this case at the 10 volt source acting on its own. We're going to redraw that circuit. 
So here it is, there's my 10 volt source. I got my 1K resistor sitting there. There's my 4K, so that's my 1K, my 4K, and I'm gonna replace this five volts with what? A zero. And so that's what my circuit now looks like. I'm looking at the effect in this circuit of the 10 volts acting alone, and I've zeroed all the other sources. In this case, there was only one other source to zero, which was that five volts. So I'm looking at this voltage between this point and here. I'm now going to call it a component of Vx, so I'll call it Vx prime. All right, so what is Vx prime? Vx prime is going to be equal to, well, it's just the voltage, isn't it, across the 4K? This is a voltage divider, isn't it? So it's really going to be 4K divided by the sum of the two. That's 4K plus 1K, and that's multiplied by 10, is it not? And so that is equal to what? This is basically 4, and this is going to be divided by 5, and that's multiplied by 10. And that gives me, what, 8 volts. So the component of Vx, due to the 10 volts acting alone, is this 8 volts over here. Let's now look at the 5 volt source acting on its own, and we'll zero all the other sources. In this case, it's just the 10, isn't it? So I've got my 5 volts sitting here. I've got my 4K. I've got my 1K over here, so that's the 4K. That is the 1K. I'm zeroing the 10 volt source. That is the circuit we're dealing with. We're now looking at the voltage between this point and this point. It's a component of Vx due to the five volts, so we'll call it Vx double prime. So we can say what? Vx double prime is equal to what? Voltage across the 1K, isn't it? So that's 1K divided by the sum of the two, so that's 1K plus 4K, and that's multiplied by what? Five. And so this is equal to what? One over five multiplied by five, which gives us this component being equal to what? Just the one volt. Okay, so we now have the two components really due to each of those sources. And so we can now say that Vx is really equal to the Vx prime due to the 10 volt source acting on its own plus the Vx double prime due to the 5 volt acting on its own. And we put that information in, we have what? We have an 8 and then plus a 1, which is equal to 9 volts. Okay, so by using superposition, we can make a multiple source problem into a relatively easy problem by considering one of the sources at a time and zeroing all the others. And we go through the problem in that fashion and then add up all the components together to find our desired result. Okay, have a think about this. And when we come back, we'll have a look at some more examples. See you next time.